Thank you for being here. I'm Sofia Espinosa. In this opportunity, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about climate change in my country, Bolivia, and um, some of the effects that we are already suffering there and some of the possible impacts that we are uh, figuring that it's going to happen in the next year. So um, in this opportunity, I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about the context, uh, what are the characteristics of Bolivia, and what are the climate change effects that we are already suffering there, some uh, strategies of adaptation that we are introducing uh, in some communities mainly, and some state policies that we are having in, in the recent years, and finally some conclusions and recommendations. Um, so, as you probably know, uh, Bolivia is, is, this is the map of my country, we are located in South America, in the heart of South America. And in our, cl our climate depends mainly of our altitudinal distribution, our land's altitudinal distribution. As you can see, uh, almost two-third parts of, of my country, Bolivia, it's, uh, it's located in lowlands, uh, lower than um, eight. 8,000 um, feet. Uh, for us, it's like lower than 100,000 meters. And it's all this area. We also have like middle lands, we call it like Bali, like similar to Napa and that kind of area. And we also have the highlands, with, uh, which are more than uh, 13,000 feet. Yeah. Um, so, and we have very big cities here, and we have main cities in, uh, in all these parts of the country as well. Uh, so our climate also depends, uh, and is related with these events that we are suffering from the 90s, I think El Niño and La Niña, that drastically modify our climate behavior in many regions, in all these regions, they suffer for many effects that we have there. And according to some researchers, uh, we are expecting that we are going to suffer increases in temperature between 3.5 to uh, 5.1 uh, Celsius by 200 and, um, uh, hun 2100, sorry. And uh, regarding on how is Bolivia contributing to the climate change this year, so according to these maps, you can see that we are uh, included in this group of countries that contributed a low, very low, low uh, scale to the CO2 emissions. These maps are just including CO2 emissions. And um, because, m mainly because we don't have a very big industry in our country. And our uh, CO2 emissions are related ma mostly uh, with deforestation in Bolivia. That's one of the main sources of deforestation that we have. So how climate change is affecting our country? Um, we have some natural conditions that make us a very vulnerable country. One of them is that we are located in a very climatically volatile region. And it's one, actually Bolivia is one of the mm, countries that is, uh, that is uh, being affected with natural disasters in recent years. We have a very high percentage of uh, indigenous people in South America, actually the, the highest percentage of, of indigenous people, and they, they suffer a lot of poverty and inequality. So these are very vulnerable communities and, and population that we have in, in Bolivia. Uh, although we have a very great and high biodiversity, uh, all these very rich biodiversity live in very vulnerable ecosystems as well. Um, as I show you in the map, more than half of the country is located in the Amazon watershed. And in this region, we, uh, we suffer a lot of high levels of deforestation and vulnerability to floods. That's the main risk that we have in this area. And we also uh, are home of 20% of the world's tropical glaciers, whose are melting in the recent decades and they are causing terrible problems for communities that live uh, below them. So all these natural conditions, you can see that make us a very vulnerable country to climate change and rising in temperatures. Um, in addition to these natural conditions that we have in Bolivia, we also have some, some problems with, with lack of reliability 
uh, related with historical climate records. We don't have very good data that we can analyze. Uh, some researchers have difficult to uh, distinguish impacts of climate variability from climate change. That's also a, uh, an issue when we, when we are uh, trying to analyze the, the climate change impacts. Uh, some researchers, they analyze a very scale climatic models. They include very large scale climatic models. And this information can be used in a very uh, low level, local level, and it is not a good information for for local governments, for example. And ah, oh, I forgot this one. I also we also have just few studies about uh, climate change, so they are increasing in the recent years, but we we still have just few. So all these uh, problems related with information, data, studies. Um, make more di even more difficult to quantify the real impact of climate change in Bolivia. So, so far we are experiencing very uh, dramatic events, these extreme events that we are suffering from, from years and that ca can be related with climate change. One of them is the f are the floods. We suffer from floods, especially in lowlands. Like almost every year we have this problem, as you can see these pictures that are from different areas in Bolivia. And from the other extreme, we also suffer from droughts. And this occurs mainly in this area, the, uh, the highlands mainly. So, and this affects a lot with, uh, to rural communities that, that have uh, um, mm, farmer production as main, some main source of income. So that's a big problem every year that we need to, we need to deal with that with, from our governments and in our, in our cities and in our rural communities. And one other thing is that we have, we have experienced some loss of biodiversity and also some geographic relocation of species and ecosystems. And they say that the most vulnerable are the endemic species that we have because they, they, are, not ba they are not able to adapt very easily to these changes in, uh, in variations and temperatures and, and uh, um, ecosystem variations that they suffer. Another thing that we are suffering is the loss of glaciers. In the last 20 years, we, we have lost around 43% of our glaciers. These are some pictures of uh, some of the glaciers that we have in Bolivia. This one is, has taken kind of, like, kind of recently, this is still considered a glacier, but you can see like in two years how, how much snow has, uh, has lost in, during, this year, during that years. And we used to have a very, very well known uh, ski center, uh, the Chacaltaya, that uh, it was actually the main, uh, the, the glacier that started to, um, to point, uh, to, me to, I don't know, to put this alarm that we are facing some problems with the glaciers because this was, uh, they, they were predicting that this should take like, I don't know how many years to be melted, but it took even lower than that. So it was a very, very, um, important uh, situation that they study. And as you can see in these pictures, like uh, after um, 60 years, you can see that now it looks like that. And if it, it, this is like almost 15 years ago. So it's now it's not considered a glacier anymore. Chacaltaya is just like a mountain without any, any snow. And sometimes we can, we can have snow, but it's not, it's not, um, maintain it on in the in the top of the rock. What are some consequences of climate change impact that we are experiencing in Bolivia and that we are predicting that is going to happen in the future and are related with these problems that I was presenting. The first one is that for sure we are going to suffer from water availability and scarcity both in urban and rural areas because of all of these problems even floods and droughts and the uh, glacier melting. Uh, we expect that we will have less food security, which is a big problem, especially for rural communities, because our agricultural production will be very affected in, in, in poor communities. Our 
most of our food comes from rural communities and we depend on that even cities we depend on this production that come uh, comes from rural communities so and every time that we have these problems that uh, food in increase on prices or, or we have food scarcity is a very big issue in, in Bolivia uh, we we know that we we have the risk of potentially dangerous overflows and avalanche from the 25 uh, glacier Andes that we have uh, glacier and the uh, and these lakes that we have there are related with the glaciers so uh, since we have this ice that is melting from the glaciers we we are kind of lakes we have kind of lakes that can produce this avalanche and then they can affect some communities actually uh, I know that we, ha we already experienced some of these um, problems and these communities have to migrate to other areas in order to, to avoid this risk and uh, it also puts in risk uh, the production and the, and the living for these communities. Uh, we predict that we'll, we'll also have more frequent and intense natural disasters and extreme events in next years. Um, also, some, since the temperature are rising, we will have increasing mosquito-borne disease. And finally, uh, we, we already have problems with fires, but we are predicting that we'll have even more fires because of the wind changes and temperature changes. So it, all of this will affect our forest fires as well. Um, one, I, I, I was... I was doing some research to present all this information now, and, and when I was doing this research uh, based on some studies that we have available, I found something that is kind of positive <laughs> thing related with climate change, and it's a very interesting um, history about some women that in, in some communities that suffer from climate change impact or these extreme events. Uh, they suffered that uh, they needed to migrate, especially men are the ones that migrate to, to other cities, to other communities in order to, to find some other jobs or um, incomes. And women stay in the, and, uh, at their communities. So in this case, they are in charge of farming, livestock, or doing anything, uh, uh, doing other activities in order to to have some income. So in these cases, we have some communities that, that are mainly um, populated by women. And women are very, very empowered in these communities. And, and they say that climate change make them stronger. As women in their communities, they feel more powerful, which is a good experience. Like even this, this um, experience of crisis, of problems, make them very strong. And it's a good, a good thing to to recognize for these women. And also they say that some positive impacts related with climate change will be like, like some local positive effects, effects that some dry areas that we have now may receive more precipitation, more rain, and this will favor agriculture and biodiversity. But it's, it's difficult to measure and, and know how, how much of this will happen in reality. We, we are experiencing some adaptation strategies, especially in communities, in rural communities. And these strategies are um, mainly um, um, they, they are kind of um, they are some ideas that come from the same communities that are suffering these extreme events. They are supported in some cases by NGOs and some organizations, but uh, the government is still needs to, to work on this, on this area. But some communities and farmers, they know that they, they are suffering from these problems. And they, for example, when it's related with livestock, the producers are, are taking actions and they are um, moving the llamas or other camelides and, camelids and sheep to other grazing grazing lands, no, to their communities, or they are also reducing the number of livestock and, and animals that they have. They are selling these ones and in order to reduce the animal burden uh, on grasslands because they know that these grasslands are not like in the past, that they are not able to, to, to have all these, those, these animals uh, every year. 
And when it's related with irrigation, the, some communities are, uh, are also uh, implementing some technological innovations, kind of simple, but they are helping to, to ensure water, uh, water availability in their communities and irrigation systems, water harvesting, cutoff, and drinking troughs. So they are implementing this in order to, to have water most of the years, and uh, even if they suffer from droughts or that kind of things. And from the state policies, uh, our government has implemented different laws related with environment, and, and that, that includes uh, climate change. The most famous one is that in 2010, we um, uh, we implement the law related to rates of Mother Earth. It's a very, very beautiful um, law that we have. In 2012, um, we implement the framework of the Mother Earth and Integral Development to Life Well, which is also one of the um, main tools that the government is, is using in order to implement some projects. And in 2014, we have a law of, law of risk management. So we have um, all this law in, in paper, but it's kind of difficult to implement it in practice. So uh, even we, we have all this uh, information, we have a lot of information, we have a lot of uh, um, regulation, but these policies have not yet implemented in practice, or, or maybe they are starting to be implemented, but it's not enough to, to deal with all these problems that we are suffering from climate change and rising temperatures. So what are the main conclusions? First, um, you can see that Bolivia is a, a country that makes a small contribution in terms of CO2 emissions and other greenhouse emissions. So we are contributing in a very low uh, scale to global climate change. But we are considering, and it, this is a very new, new uh, information, we are considered among the most vulnerable and least prepared in South America to mitigate all, all these da damages. So it's, it's very, uh, it's very um, important for us to, to, to start thinking about how are we going to deal with all these problems that we are going to face next year and actually we are facing right now. So, but because, um, we have a lot of problems and we are not well prepared to mitigate uh, all these damages that are coming. Um, related with research, uh, I, I, was talk I was telling that we, since we are not one of the main contributors to global climate change, we, have cer we certainly have CO2 emissions and and uh, these come mainly from deforestation processes that are very, very uh, uh, important for our uh, uh, rise in temperatures, changes in temperatures that we suffer locally and these floods and, and some other problems that we, we face in, in some different areas in Bolivia. So deforestation is a big issue actually in, and it's our uh, maybe it's one of our most uh, important environment problems that we are facing r last years. We don't have enough data to analyze climate change and some of them they are not accurate sources of information and even in the all this uh, research that they do they use different methods to measure climate change effects uh, um, some of them are kind of uncertain and contradictory so even we have some information but we don't know how to use it and how reliable is this information. That's also very, a very important thing to consider. And related with policies, what are we going, what are we doing there? What our government is doing related to climate change and all these problems that we are suffering? As I told you, uh, we have some laws, some very interesting laws related with Mother Earth and environment, but these are not uh, being in practice yet. So we, we lack of regulation. We need to uh, think more about like, how are we going to implement all this, this law that we have? Because they are really good. They have really good things to implement, but it's for us, it's very difficult to, to put it in practice. We don't have policies for reducing deforestation, which is again our main so source of CO2 emissions and actually some policies from the government are trying to promote 
uh, land, land change use and convert forests to lands or agriculture and cattle. So it, in this case, is kind of contradicting policy that the government is trying to promote, like deforestating and have more cattle and agriculture lands. Uh, we, lack of, uh, we suffer from lack of policies for environmental awareness and efficient use of natural resources. Even in cities we have this problem. We have a lot of problems with uh, a good management on our, our natural resources that we have. And it's like, I think probably in cities we have more awareness of from population that we are, st we are starting to suffer all these climate uh, change issues and extreme events. but. We don't have a lot of information on, on how to deal with all these problems, on, or how to avoid, or how to mitigate all these, all these uh, events that we are going to suffer, and we are already suffering. And in a municipal level, we we don't have ma uh, many public policies, and a municipal level is very important for us because it's more close to rural communities. So we need to work in that area too. Some recommendations based on this kind of quick research that I did uh, about climate change in Bolivia will be first that we need to develop and implement an overarching and national policy on climate change. We don't have, we don't have like a climate change uh, program or, or some policy that is clear and how are we going to deal all these problems that we are, we are going to face next years. Since since we know that we are going to suffer about water, uh, water uh, av availability next years related with all these problems, we need to invest uh, in potable water and water systems for irrigation, especially in rural areas. Uh, it's important to consider the needs of uh, and role of women in, adap in adaptation policies is some um, some examples that, that we saw that women can be very, very important in these processes of adaptation and they are, and they can take, and they can lead some of these processes as well in a good, in a good way. It's important to consider them in this process. Include disaster risk reduction in long term planning at all levels of government. We don't have this so far. Uh, and this will be important for farmers introduce an agricultural insurance since they are going to experience maybe some losses in their production. It's, it will be very good for them to have this kind of support in order to protect and, uh, and avoid this, uh, mm, this food insecurity that we can, we can suffer next years. Support local communities in their efforts to adapt and manage risk of climate change. We are receiving some support from international cooperation, NGOs, some foundations that we have there, but we need more support from the government as well. And we still generate more information and research, uh, especially from the state. We don't have a, an official source of information about climate change from the state. That will be good. Some, sometimes the government uh, um, speech, when they talk about climate change, they are based on information that they, they gather from other sources, but not from state sources. That, that's kind of, uh, that's a concern that we need, and we need to deal with that. We need a, a state uh, source of information. So that will be all. Thank you. Um, well, uh, I'm done with my presentation, so you are free to, to do some questions. I will be happy to, to answer them. Sophia, yeah. you mentioned um, sort of a difference between the people in the rural areas and the cities. Does everyone... Um, do you, do you believe in general the people of the country understand that climate change is the is what's causing so many of these uh, difficult problems? Or do you think, I know in the United States we have um, an, an unfortunate number of people who seem to be denying that this is going on. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if you think that's similar in your country or not. Mm. I think we also have both. I think uh, even some research are not very um, accurate to say like 
this is related with climate change for sure. We have these events, El Niño, La Niña, we have uh, some of these extreme events that can be related with climate change and we but we we for sure know some 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 of these events are related with rising temperatures increasing in floods are dry and droughts for example they are they confirm that it's related with rising in temperatures so i think in cities a uh, population is more aware about uh, these kind of problems that are related with climate change because we have more information. But in rural communities, they have little information. So they, they notice that the, the weather is changing, the climate is changing. They notice because they, they as a farmers, they, they, they know that they cannot rely on, on rain in the same seasons than before, for example, they notice that the weather is changing, the climate is changing. So we need to bring more information to them in order to to know that, in order to let them know that is that there is a global problem that we are facing. So, and we also have some some people that don't believe in climate change as well. We also have these people that say that there is kind of a cycle cycle that we are suffering and it's normal and, it's, and we are going to. To, to deal with this and it's kind of a natural problem. But uh, I think it's good that we are in, uh, research is increasing and it's kind of demonstrated that climate change problems related with uh, temperatures are real and we have some of them in Bolivia as well and we need to deal with that. Yeah. Um, I would think as awareness grows that in fact you are one of the countries that has contributed the least to climate change and is suffering the most mm -hmm. there would be mm, a rising demand for help um, since it's not really your fault and and you're suffering so much and do you see that happening either in the cities or in the rural parts of the country I mean people from the altiplano are, are having to leave they can't grow their crops and there's a water shortage so they're having to to come down lower mm -hmm. in order to survive um, but I don't know if they're connecting that it's not their fault um, and it's not really a natural thing that they're just you know bad luck mm -hmm. and at what point will they start to point the finger and say we really should be receiving some funds from other countries who are at fault. But is that happening at all or no? Mm. I think in, in the rural area, we have problems with information and maybe they don't, most yeah. of them, they don't have this information that this is a global scale problem and then it's related with these greenhouse emissions that, are, that uh, have been released like many, many years ago and it's, it, uh, Bolivia as a country didn't contribute very much with this. I think they are not very aware of that, maybe in cities since we have more information, but our government has expressed that, and in, in many uh, opportunities in these um, e global events that we have related with climate change, that he's not, um, he, he wants um, big countries, the main contributors to climate change that recognize that that make all this damage and they should uh, compensate the small countries that didn't contribute in a different way. That's why uh, our government, this, the actual government sometimes is, is again some um, mm, market solutions for these kind of problems that we are facing, for example. And for sure our government uh, is kind of trying to deal with this um, like global impact that we are suffering in small countries like Bolivia and trying to find a way that uh, the big contributors for climate change take some responsibility about that. I think that mm -hmm. for sure uh, this government is trying to, to make that possible, like mm -hmm. at least in, in words, yeah. Yeah, I've seen that actually Bolivia has mm -hmm. been a leader in, in trying to say, to, to demand some of the, some, some, um, reparations or some help. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sophia, you mentioned that uh, municipal governments are important in Bolivia. And in some countries, lo local governments have actually pushed and gone much further and been more aggressive in adopting policies to address climate change than their national governments have. Uh, mm -hmm. In Bolivia, are the local governments in a position to be able to do that? I think they are in a position to do that for sure. They have uh, the power, but the problem that we face every year is about uh, monetary resources. Sometimes they don't have enough resources and they prioritize some other problems like we, we still face like basic needs related with basic needs, ba basic services. So they prioritize all these uh, um, policies instead of uh, this uh, um, preventing damages or preventing or risk uh, risk management related to climate change effects or that kind of things. I know that they have some budget to to deal with these uh, damages that can be caused by floods or droughts, that kind of things, but some policies that are trying to avoid or uh, trying to prepare people in order to um, face these problems in the future are very, yeah, very few. I think we, we are very weak in that sense, yeah. Hi, Sophia. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned uh, that deforestation was an ongoing problem, um, and I, s I see sort of a dichotomy between sort of the indigenous farming practices and the deforestation, and uh, my assumption is that deforestation is more of the um, industrial level of agriculture, and I'm wondering um, if the role of the U.S. is recognized um, in deforestation, um, my understanding is that a lot of the deforestation is happening to clear land for cattle to export beef primarily. Um, and I'm assuming that indigenous agricultural practices are very different from that. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess I'm wondering if, and you mentioned that the government um, has maybe contradictory policies sort of the old way was to encourage deforestation and the, the, the new policies perhaps conflict with that. Um, so I'm wondering if the political will to take on the forces that are causing deforestation and, and the, the demand for beef in the United States, if that political will is there, you know, what can be done? Has there been any um, developments or any improvements in that situation? Mm -hmm. It's it's true that deforestation, the highest rates of deforestation that we, we have in Bolivia are mainly related with um, la uh, change in land use for cattle and agriculture and at the industry level, that's true. Uh, but we also have this uh, and it's true that communities, rural communities, they have a different way of, um, they, they have a different use of land, right? It's like a small, uh, small land that they have, but we have many, many communities. And we, uh, for example, in some area of the Amazon area that we also start facing some increasing levels of deforestation. We have many families there, so they, they give land to family, to each family or household. So, and they are able to deforestate, I don't know, I think last year, a couple of years, they increased the, 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 the size of land that, that they are allowed to deforestate. So even if it's a small scale, when you consider all the families or the households that they are allowed to deforestate in a big scale is a considerable deforestation even that they manage this, this land in a different way, that industry. So both are kind of um, important issues to deal with. Industry also because they are increasing crops and these crops uh, may are mainly related with some exports that we have. They are not <laughs> products that we are, we are um, using in Bolivia and cattle, uh, this policy that the government has for the next years to increase cattle is it's also related for 
um, with meat that they want to sell to China and Russia mainly, as that's uh, as far as I know from from the news. So um, it's kind of worry about uh, this kind of contradictory policies that the government has because from one side he he wants to improve the economy he wants to but from other he he needs to deal with all these these problems that we are facing related with climate change deforestation so it's not it's not very clear like um, what's going to happen because um, we have deforestation is, is our is one of our main problems that we are facing there but we are not sure what's going to happen like next years if this becomes real like that we are going to increase a lot of the deforestation for cattle and also for crops hmm. yeah. do you know if the children um, and the young people in the rural areas are migrating more to the urban areas for for jobs and um, a different way of living, or does it seem that most of the folks in the country sort of stay put uh, in where they were born? We have a lot of problems with migrations, and um, f for for certain, uh, one of the reasons that they may migrate is because they have these uh, difficult conditions to to crop like droughts and floods. So what this, this is one of the reasons, it's not the main reason maybe because we also have some social, social problems that make them migrate to a different cities or even different countries. And uh, people that migrate are mainly men and young men, young adults. When young adults uh, migrate sometimes are for like having a better uh, education for example, but migration in adult, population I think is more related with some um, sources or incomes that, that they are trying to find in a different in different cities or even different communities that they that they have very close yeah. hi mm -hmm. um, I have a question about um, whether um, water reuse is, if there's a tradition of water reuse at all in Bolivia, um, you know, and of course the cities and the, and the countryside will have two different traditions, but it, it, what are the water systems like? You mentioned that water scarcity is going to be a, a mm -hmm. big problem. Big problem. Um, is there any tradition of reusing water in households in the cities? Um, and what about um, in the agricultural setting? Mm -hmm. In the cities, yeah, the answer is no. We don't have that tradition. It's something that we need to work on, reusing, be more efficient in, 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 uh, in using natural resources, especially water, because we suffer, even in La Paz, this one of the biggest cities that we have there, and uh, we suffer from uh, water scarcity uh, a couple of years ago, and it was a very important crisis. Like people didn't know what to do because we didn't have water in our houses. So, and at that time we were trying to to learn how to use in a very efficient way the water. But after that, uh, w we didn't have more policies to to make people aware of this problem that we are. We, we can suffer like any time and we are going to suffer for sure in the next years. So we need more about this policy, like um, um, this um, more awareness, more information to the people, like our local governments, municipality governments, they need to work on that too, because it for sure is something that we need to learn how to, how to do this in cities. And in communities, we also have problems with irrigations. They are not good and efficient systems with irrigation. Some, some recommendations are related with that, that we need to improve our systems, our um, maintenance uh, issues also, even the, the equipment, the systems that we have, they are not very efficient. So we need to improve a lot in that area too, both in rural, rural more related with irrigation and because we spend a lot of water in the irrigation system and in urban, uh, urban areas with 
like drinking water and use of water. Um, in the rural sort of um, sustain, I guess sustenance type agriculture, where I assume families are growing their own food and 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 living off of the food. I don't. I'm curious what percentage of people are living off their own food and and how many people are are um, selling for profit. Mm -hmm. um, and if there are indigenous um, practices that are more water wise that are still in place, or has there been a movement to sort of adopt supposedly progressive Western irrigation techniques? Mm -hmm. mm, I think in in rural rural areas related with uh, farming, we we have both like they depend on their food their pr uh, food production to have their own food but they also sell this food mm -hmm. but in so many cases these are like um, considering um, uh, food for on like own sustainability like even if they sell some of this uh, of this food that they produce this is just like the basic income that they need to to survive like it's like a very low level of income that they can reach with this food that they sell so it's I, I will say that in most of the country they produce both for sale and also for consume their own food and about the irrigation systems we have this problem ma mainly in the highlands and probably in the middlelands that we have because in the lowlands we we have a lot of rain there so ba basically um, crops they don't need irrigation in that area they have some products that they depend just on the natural rain so we don't they don't need irrigation i've heard that in some cases they are they are experiencing some problems with uh, water as well th which is kind of new and they are going to i think they are going to research more about this they are going to study more about this because it's it's unusual to have water scarcity in lowlands because that area is very wet, it's very humid, we have the forest there, so it's, it's basically very, very uh, rich in water. So uh, that's kind of new, but uh, our irrigation problem will be more on the highlands. And about the systems that, that they are using, I don't know, I think it's, it's a combination as well, maybe some very modern systems, but some of them uh, maybe traditional systems that they have, or maybe some basic. For sure, the industry that we have related with crops, they are very, very well developed in irrigation systems, but may, mm, probably family households, they have very basic systems with that use, yeah. So just to be clear, they used to have um, irrigation systems that work just fine based on the melting of the glaciers. Mm. And and now the glaciers are based on the the seasonal melting of the glaciers. And now with the glaciers melting and gone and not forming again, that's what's causing the yeah the problems that they don't have that seasonal melt. And eventually, like the one you showed us, the glaciers are gone entirely, and there is no more water. Yeah, for sure. In, in so all that's a big change big. from climate change. Mm -hmm. That loss of water. Yeah. So they it's not like they've never had systems that worked they did have systems that mm -hmm. worked but yeah uh, for sure we need to improve the systems as well but of all these communities and and that depend on this water from glaciers they are suffering for this problem that they are facing and they need to yeah. move from other places and that's water true source. so in that case irrigation they used to have irrigation or maybe some even if it's, it was a very basic irrigation system, but they had the water there very yeah. close, that's, that's the thing. Uh, but yeah, in some other areas, maybe the problem is like irrigation efficiency. So I think we need, we have different kinds of problems. And since we, I think we, we have water in Bolivia, we, we need to mm, use it in a very efficient way. We need to deal with all these problems that we have, like the melting of glaciers, because we are we know that now even cities depends like like La Paz depends on this glacier water in some in some proportion, like 15% of the uh, of the city of La Paz 
it's uh, is using this this water that comes from glaciers so we need to uh, work on that, what, what's going to happen, what are we going to deal with this problem, we need to find other sources of water, we need to explore this, so I think the government is started to work on this as well, it's kind of slow but we need to work on that, like anyway. Hmm. Is there one thing that you see in, in Bolivia today that gives you hope that it will be able to address, uh, if not, if certainly not fully, at least uh, uh, do its part in addressing the problem? Mm. I think, I think yes, even that from the government perspective, it's kind of contradictory, the policies that they are implementing, that's for sure. Maybe local governments, they, they, are, they will be able to do more, like go, we have regional governments made, like we are uh, divided in departments, so maybe these uh, governments will be able to do more than the national level. And we also have the, the same communities that know that, that they are suffering of all these problems and they are taking some action. They are, uh, um, they are searching some for some sources of um, help. They are going, they are knocking the doors of some organizations or foundations to work with them, to help them. Uh, not only to understand what's what's happening because we are starting to work for example in adaptation strategies with crops that are more um, resilient that kind of thing things so they need help with that I think in, in that level community level farmers they will try to find these options for sure because it's it's the 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 work they do to survive so they they depend on that so they they will find a solution even if they they don't have uh, a lot of support from the government i hope that uh, the government will will have more projects related with climate change impacts and all these problems that we are facing and we'll see because we are going to change our government this next year as well Any more questions? Sophie, you have been talking for an hour and you must be getting <laughs> tired. Thank you Thank so you. much for letting us have some insight into how things are going in Bolivia. We certainly hope your country does well and holds on to that belief about the importance of Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for coming here and I'm, I'm glad to share a little bit about Bolivia and a little bit about pro, uh, our problems that we have there facing with climate change. And I hope like next year's we'll have more answers to to deal with the problems that we are facing now. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.